Do you struggle to keep your code documentation up to date? In this video, we'll show you the way that an Amazon engineering team tackles this challenge by walking you through the architecture of their solution so you can replicate it on your own. Hi, I'm Francois. Hi, I'm Rohan. Amazon Web Services makes it easy to generate and publish documentation website for your .NET project. Using source code, doc strings, API definitions, and markdown documents included in the project, we can generate and host HTML documentation on AWS. Let's explore the design in this video. In Amazon, my team develops a suite of productivity boosting applications. And one of the applications that we develop is like the marketplace. So using marketplace, the developer communities uh, publish, search, and reuse the automation SDKs. So today's design has helped my team enhance the discovery and reuse of the relevant SDKs among the developer community. OK, Ron, why it is so important for your team to have continuously updated documentation? That's a good question, Francois. So like I mentioned, uh, my team has a community of developers. So uh, we have uh, multiple use cases for documentation. So the first thing is uh, whenever a new person onboards in our team, or let's say a person is moving out of the team, uh, knowledge transfer and ramp up become very easy. The second thing is like uh, we uh, have this particular marketplace. And uh, uh, during maintenance phase, uh, let's say if there is uh, issues, it becomes easy to search the particular piece of of code and solve those maintenance tickets. And uh, the uh, final thing I would say is like, uh, since we have many external developers who are also contributing to this particular code base, whenever they want their particular capabilities to be reused by other people, uh, the discovery of those capabilities and uh, the reuse becomes easy. So this helps uh, improve the productivity for the team. OK. And what are the building blocks of your code documentation generator? So I can divide the overall code documentation generation design into three parts. One is the documentation generation actual, and then the other is the file storage of those um, generated uh, documentation. And the third piece is where you actually go and publish it so the viewers can view it easily. OK, so how, how, do, you, how do you handle the first part? How do you handle the documentation generation? Right. So uh, in the documentation generation, if you consider it like a black box, we can have multiple inputs to that box, like uh, an XML-based tags or a Swagger uh, JSON files. Uh, and these can then be transformed by the documentation generation into HTML or uh, YAML or uh, PDF uh, or JSON files. And uh, now if you want to dive deep a bit into actual documentation generation, uh, we are using the docfx tool, uh, which does this for us. So docfx, what it does, it passes the code files and uh, passes those XML tags uh, in the doc strings. And uh, then using those, it kind of creates rich HTML documentation. And this rich HTML documentation we use to publish uh, for our users. OK. So once, you, once documentation is generated, where do you store it? How, how does it work? So this particular documentation, uh, you know, I, what I talked about it, just like uh, doing uh, manually running docfx and generating this. But we need this at every code build. So we make it a part of core CI CD pipeline. Now, if I were to talk about the design, uh, we have used uh, native AWS. And in that, we have used the code pipeline. And inside code pipeline, we have code uh, commit, which is like the code repository. Okay. So uh, this holds all the code. And then we have a code build, which is like uh, the uh, actual uh, uh, Windows server which uh, builds or compiles the code. And uh, you know, now if I go a level down into code build aspect, code build uh, is divided into three parts, like uh, the pre-building part, the uh, actual build part, and the post-building part. So in the pre-building part, we install docfx on the uh, build machine, that is the Windows server. And uh, then we compile the code, uh, that is our SDK code. And during the post part, if the code compilation is successful, then we kind of uh, use docfx to generate HTML uh, documents from this particular uh, uh, build uh, or the code. So the doc is generating. It is stored um, onto an S3 bucket. 
Yeah, That's so it. I think then we come to the second part of the design, which is like the file storage. So in the file storage, uh, whatever the documentation is generated, now we will be storing it on an S3 bucket. And now there are some nuances to this. Uh, in our case, uh, we wanted to store the uh, HTML documents only when there is a version update to that particular package. And that is why we have one Lambda, uh, which you can see in the design, which basically first checks whether uh, the uh, code which got compiled, the version of that piece of code and the uh, version which which is sitting in S3, are they, uh, uh, like, is the compiled code greater than the S3 version or not? If it is greater, then it uh, allows the copy of those uh, HTML files into S3. Uh, there is another Lambda as well. Now, what this Lambda does is, uh, whenever all these HTML files get copied into S3, there is a uh, main index file or the file which is called as table of contents. And this Lambda kind of merges all those uh, copied files into this table of content so that uh, whenever the user goes to the website, he can see a complete view of the, on the landing page. How do you make the, those files accessible? Do you use, um, let's say, basic uh, S3 static website or something, something else? Right. So, um, you know, S3 can be used to host static websites, but one of the key problems with this, that is, like, it's not secure because, again, S3 is supporting HTTP and not HTTPS, uh, so we needed something which is more secure. Another problem that we were having is, like, uh, our audience was global. Like, we had developers sitting out of different uh, regions um, globally, and uh, if S3 is in just one region, then the latency for them to actually see the documentation will be a bit higher uh, compared to the folks who are in the same location where the S3 is there. So uh, we come up, uh, we have uh, added the piece of CloudFront uh, in the design. And uh, as uh, CloudFront is the content de delivery uh, service, uh, this helps us to reduce the latency uh, global for global audience. Another uh, important uh, benefit it gives us is like it also supports HTTPS. So now uh, the overall uh, design is more uh, secure. Uh, and uh, another thing which I would also add, like to add is like when we are storing the files on S3, we have also used SSE encryption, server-side encryption, to make it more secure. Okay, but now you, your files are accessible through CloudFront, but I guess you don't want anyone to access your web, uh, documentation website, so how do, how do you authenticate user and authorize them? I think that's a very good point, Francois. It's definitely not safe to just have it open for anyone to access it, right? So uh, in our design, like as a part of our requirement, we just wanted to limit it to Amazon uh, internal developers. So we have used uh, a very simple mechanism of uh, IP addresses, and uh, only those IP addresses get access to that. However, uh, what customers can do is they can connect it with Cognito uh, and uh, have a layer of authentication authorization on top of it, so that only uh, those folks who are authorized to access the documents can access them. Okay, and is there any other uh, particular point you, you would like to highlight in this solution? Um, I think uh, a few more things which I can highlight, it's not covered in the blog, but uh, the readers or the, the viewers can do that, is uh, like in case if they want to build a semantic search on top of it, uh, they can use this documentation as the base, and uh, then using OpenSearch and SageMaker, they can kind of use a vector DB kind of a system, wherein they can build a semantic search service on top of that. And uh, another thing also what they can do to scale is in this particular blog post, we have just covered uh, how the documentation documentations get generated for a single CI CD pipeline, but now if they want to do it more and more, uh, they can use SNS and SQS uh, to kind of um, trigger that particular piece of Lambda, which uh, merges everything into the table of contents file, so that uh, uh, multiple CI CD pipelines can send documentation to the same S3 bucket. Okay. To summarize, if you want to keep your documentation updated, select a documentation generate tool suited to your programming language that support several input formats. Include code documentation generation in your CI CD pipeline and make your code documentation easily accessible to your team. If you want to learn more about this solution, you can deep dive by reading Ron's blog linked in the description of this video. If you enjoyed this video and want more hands-on technical content, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the AWS Developers YouTube channel. See you in the next video. Bye. Bye.